Your Excellency, Sien Gra Press, Government Advisor, Ministry of Interior, Som TC Leader of Kingdom, Cambodia. Your Excellency Heather Grant, High Commissioner of the uh, Canada to Singapore. Mr. Mohammed Zaani Shah Abdullah, Assistant Commissioner of the Police, Director of the Police Services, as Singapore Secretariat. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to open the Interpol Digital Forensic Workshop, Southeast Asia and the Pacific, today at the premise of Interpol Global Complex for Innovation, which was inaugurated April this year. I would first like to thank the Government of Canada for its continuous support to Interpol activities. This forensic workshop is one of the many events that Canada is supporting through Interpol in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. I would also like to convey Interpol's appreciation to the ASEAN for its cooperation, especially remarkable work achieved by Son TC, the senior officials meeting on the transnational crime. I'm confident that our organization will continue on this path to increase cooperation with the implementation of the new project. I would also like to thank ASEAN Paul for their support in organizing this workshop, as well as my colleagues, directors, Mr. Dale Sheehan, Interpol Director of Capacity Building and Training, and also Mr. Michael Okuna, Director of Operational Support Analysis, and their teams for their hard work to organize this event. Today's workshop is held within the framework of the capacity building programs on improving counter-terrorism and international cooperation in the ASEAN member states. It is within these programs that successful operations Sambad focusing on counter-terrorism was conducted in March this, um, this year at the IGCI. Interpol championed this training operational model that combined training on Interpol tools and services followed by actual operation on the ground. That is why we are planning Samba 2 operation next year to increase the use of Interpol forensics tools in areas such as facial recognition and fingerprint analysis. Law enforcement officers around the world have one aim in common. It is to ensure our citizens' safety and security, regardless of whether they are on the streets or online. Identification of criminals is a key to law enforcement in order to investigate crime, including terrorism. In the context of tracking criminals, biometric technologies are crucial. Facial recognition technologies, for instance, can be used proactively at national borders by screening travelers against databases of most wanted uh, persons or persons related to the terrorist activities as foreign fighters. So recording and also information sharing of biometric data is a very sensitive issue, but essential in identifying crimes and criminals. The global databases Interpol possesses rely on that. The digital age has virtually erased borders and modified the way law enforcement agencies conduct investigation. And the solutions to identify crime and criminals need to be enhanced further. Under the Interpol visions connecting the police for a safer world, IGCI was created to address unprecedented challenges law enforcement are facing with in the digital age, especially cybercrime. It is obvious for Interpol that simply connecting the police to another police is not sufficient for the safer world in the 21st century. As the internet has become the integral part of our daily life, the growing dependencies on the internet put our society at the risk of exploitation by criminals. In fact, more and more crimes are committed online. Criminality is now evolving from the physical to cyberspace. When it comes to the crime committed online, cybercrime, police investigation is basically compo composed of the two phases. 
The first phase of investigation is a machine level identification, as some of you may know, to identify where the, where the crime originate from in the cyberspace. In another word, IP address merely indicates the location of server's computers. At this phase, digital forensics, namely computer forensics, mobile forensics, and malware forensics are extremely important. Without these digital forensic examination, investigation cannot go further. In this context, our digital forensic laboratory, which you will be visiting during your visit, conduct these digital forensic activities here in IGCI, and that their team can offer support to you. Since the identified computers cannot be prosecuted, law enforcement agencies need to identify the very person who committed a crime. This is a second layer of the investigation, a cybercrime investigation. At this stage, biometric technology such as a fingerprint, DNA, facial recognition can link between digital and the physical tracking of the criminals. So we need innovation in policing to trace criminals efficiently and effectively. For instance, application of the facial recognition technology to drones to track criminals from the sky is a good example of the branding new technologies for law enforcement purpose. We need to go further in this adaptation of the new technologies for policing purpose. Let me conclude by repeating once more that the digital age has modified the way law enforcement agency conduct investigation to identify crime and criminals. But we must keep in mind that behind every cybercrime, there is a physical word criminal and a phys physical word impact. And the biometric technologies are more important than ever in that endeavor of identifying criminals so as to prevent, detect, and investigate crime. I wish you a very successful workshop and I hope you will have the good stay in Singapore. Thank you so much.